They are pupils, parents, and guardians. Let me start by thanking you for being a part of all our remote learning platforms, particularly our television program, The Classroom in Your Home. Each feedback has been awesome. Good job, you. Our teachers have been working assiduously to break the learning laws during this critical period. Therefore, I am pleased to inform you that the classroom in your home has been extended to accommodate the lower primary classes and a dedicated lesson to cater for our special needs pupils in line with our mandate of providing an all-inclusive and quality basic education in our dear state. This program is fully sponsored by the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, and supported by the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board under the COVID-19 Blended Learning Intervention Initiative. Please encourage your wards to tune in and take every advantage of this laudable program. Also remember, this pandemic is not over. Let us continue to abide by all health and safety guidelines as stipulated by the government. At last Ubeb, we are determined to leave no child behind in our quest to improve the standard of basic education in our state. Thank you. Take your time and walk very hard For the days are going by Want an opportunity is gone It may never be regained Do not waste the golden time for the days I go in by From the lyrics of that song, children, we are ready to make sure you do not lose any opportunity as far as your education is concerned. And so, this program tagged the classroom in your home has been designed specially for you and has been sponsored, fully sponsored, by Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, Packaged by Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, La Suburb. This is to ensure that no child is left behind. And this program, this edition, is for lower primary classes. Well, let me introduce my colleagues to you quickly. On my left, I have Auntie Tenu. Can you say hello to our friends? Hello, wonderful pupils. And you'll be teaching them what, Auntie Tenu? Mathematics. You look forward to that, right? And also on my right, I have Uncle Sheyi. Hello, pupils. And you'll be teaching them about Uncle Sheyi? General Shei? studies. Wow. Yeah. And myself, I am Aunt Zolola, And I'll be taking you through in English studies, which I call communication class. And in trial, we bring you the, the classroom, classroom in, in your home. home. Please stay tuned and learn. Have you ever met two identical twins? The resemblance is so much that you can't even put a difference between the two of them. Well, it might interest you to know that in English language, we have identical twins. Welcome to today's English Studies class, which I call Communication class. And for today, we'll be looking at another interesting topic, which is synonyms. But, you know, as our ritual, we need to do the correction to our previous homework. So, believing you all did yours, can you bring out your homework book, open to the page where you wrote your last assignment, and let's get the correction done. Well, you were told to change the word in capital letters to antonyms, word opposite in meaning. Did you recall? Okay, so for the first one, it is faster than I expected. Faster. What is the antonym of faster? It is what? It is slower. Okay, let me grab my pen. Okay. For faster, the antonym is slower. Did you get that correctly? Beautiful. Give yourself a tick. The road is very rough. Okay. The antonym of rough the road is very smooth the road is very smooth another thing if you got that i am inside the house the antonym of inside i am outside the house i am outside the house okay i got mine here did you 
give yourself a tick. Mom will buy the toy when coming home. The antonym of buy is what? Is sell. Wow, I got far over four. What about you? Four over four, too. Beautiful. You deserve to be celebrated. <laughs> awesome. And now we move to today's lesson. And for us to be looking at learning objective, please, children, pay rapt attention and put this at the back of your mind that by the end of the lesson, you should be able to know these two objectives. One, you should be able to define synonyms. You should, you should also be able to mention examples of synonyms. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's move. First, let's get the definition of synonyms. Synonyms are words with the same meaning or almost same meaning synonyms s y n o n y m s can you repeat that children s y n o n y m s synonyms now we say synonyms are word with the same meaning so we could practically say that two words identical twins that have same meaning okay it is also a word that has a close meaning to another word a word that has close meaning to another word i'm sure it will make sense when we start looking at these examples angry another word for angry the, the synonym for angry is furious you can see that angry emoji you can also say a furious emoji okay why are you angry why are you furious same meaning synonyms of sit is chair if you don't want to use chair you can say sit wow this is plenty money many the synonym of many is lots you know that currency 1000 era many you can say lot okay the next example we will be looking at is smile you can see that smile emoji you can also say green the synonym of smile is green the green is not g r e e n green color green no of course, it has the same way of pronouncing it. This is G -R -I -N, G-R-I-N, green. Okay. Another example, wow. This is a shop. You can see a lot of provisions in it, right? Yes, I can also see it. This is a shop. And the synonym of shop is store. While using it in the world, you, cannot, you can use shop. And you can use store. That is the essence of this lesson. Do not forget, we are still looking at what children? Synonyms. Synonyms. Okay, let's look at the next example. We have fast. We have fast. And the synonym of fast is what? Quick. The synonym of fast is quick. For my body, I have a very fast animal. So fast. And of course, the animal is also running quickly. So you can use either of the word when expressing yourself in a sentence. Okay, now we've been able to look at few examples, but now we want to see how synonyms are being used in sentences. Okay, and I have a few examples penned down for you to see. Example of synonyms in sentences. Mickey is an intelligent boy. He can answer the questions. You can see the word written boldly. It is what intelligent. And so what is the synonym of intelligent? Mickey is a clever boy. Mm, he can answer the questions. So the synonym of intelligent is what children is clever. It's clever. Okay. Another example is, my dad is troubled. 
my dad is troubled the synonym of troubled children my dad is worried my dad is worried they they both say the same thing in a sentence okay we move to the next example the woman has been yelling since morning yelling yelling what does yelling mean let's get at the synonym of that word of, of course it will make sense to you the woman has been shouting oh is shouting the same thing as yelling yes my dear friend it is the same thing the woman has been shouting since morning okay we've been able to look at some examples and now it is your turn i want you to do this as a way of showing me or telling me you've been following since the beginning of the lesson change the words in capital letters to synonyms the words in capital letter change them to synonyms one the dog was injured can you see the word in capital letter injured the answer is incorrect the answer is incorrect okay i would be giving you one minute to do that find a synonym of those words in capital letter and your time starts now eyes on me welcome back i'm sure you've been able to find the answer to those two questions okay so let's confirm if you're correct if you're correct please give yourself a tick and if not please you can put star in front do not cross it totally okay change the words in capital letters in to synonyms change the words in capital letters to synonyms the first one the dog was injured the dog was injured and so what is the synonym of injured the dog was wounded Ooh, I got the answer okay that is interesting let me grab my pen sorry let me grab my pen and give myself a tick because i got it here also <clears throat> the answer is incorrect and so the answer is the answer is wrong the answer is wrong incorrect wrong they both say the same thing in a word wow you got two over two i'm so proud of you you got one over two i'm so proud of you you deserve to be celebrated and now to your now to your assignment to your assignment put this down children write the synonyms of the following words write the synonyms of the following words one behave two danger the third one encourage okay the first one sleep behave danger encourage and sleep i'm waiting okay you've put that down oh beautiful well that would be it for today 
so far we've been able to look at synonyms we've been also we've also been able to look at examples and how we can use those synonyms in sentences and we also learned about how mistakes can be the betterment of our life well till i come your way next class please be good and always be careful it is time for our mathematics class with antetinu please still relax and learn bye welcome to today's mathematics class when i say mathematics time you say yes you say fun time mathematics time fun time and like always today's mathematics class promises to be fun yes today i will be teaching pictogram and my name is tino yes i am anti tino your mathematics teacher learning objectives by the end of the lesson what do i expect you to be able to do what do i expect you to know at the end of today's lesson yes at the end of the lesson today you should be able to appreciate the meaning of pictogram solve problems involving pictogram are we ready are we ready yes let's go pictogram say pictogram pictogram means using pictures to represent or convey a meaning of a thing i take that again pictogram means using pictures to represent or convey a meaning of a thing don't be confused don't worry as the lesson goes on you will understand what i mean by using a picture to represent or convey a meaning of a thing pictogram is a chart that uses picture that uses pictures that uses pictures remember pictures is very important in pictogram that uses pictures to represent that uses picture to represent data using pictogram to represent data example 1 this is simi's farm on simi's farm there are goats cows pigs and hens let's help simi take record of all the animals on the farm let's help simi take record of all the animals on the farm so now i've helped simi arrange all uh, all the animals on our farm number one we have goats two we have pigs three we have cows and four we have hens yes so this is using pictures to represent instead of just counting and writing down the numbers i was able to draw the goats on simi's farm i was able to draw the pigs on simi's farm and i was able to draw the cows and hens on simi's farm so it will be very easy for me to count i've grouped them by their names and by their pictures and it will be so easy to count let's see yes using the picture of the animals on the farm it's easy for us to count and tell how many animals are on simi's farm instead of going from one store to another trying to separate the goats from the hen from the we, now we've separated them they are in different shades they are in different huts they are in different houses so it's so easy to count the animals on simi's farm now let's count. Yes, let's count the goats together. One, two, three, four, five, six goats on Simi's farm. Why was I able to count the goats accurately and quickly? Because goats was drawn and we can reckon that because this is a picture of a goat. It is the goat we are counting. Remember I said on Simi's farm we have many animals. If I did not draw goats and I say count the animals, you will ask me, Auntie Tino, which of the animals am I supposed to count? But now 
I counted six. When I asked you six words are on Simi's farm, you will tell me six goats. Why? Because the picture of the goat is represented. Are we together? Yes, together we are. Now let's count the pigs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pigs. Did you get nine too? Yes. Good job, bro. Now let's count the cows. One, two, three. Yes, I know. This is not a cow. I know you are, you are, you are trying to see Auntie Sinu, that is not a cow. How were you able to recognize that this is not a cow? Because the pictures are different. Smart you. Good job, you. Now let's count cows. One, two, three four five six cows did you get six with me yes you deserve a chair good job you now let's count the hands is this the hen is this the hen no this is the pictures of hands on simi's farm now let's count them together one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Yes, so on Simi's farm, we have six goats, nine pigs, six cows, and 28 Hands, yes. So in total, we have 49 animals on Simi's farm. Are we together? Yes, together we are. Note, we use a key to show the number of items represented by one picture. We use a key to show the number of items represented by one picture. Don't worry, you will understand what I mean by using a key to represent the number of items. Example two, the picture below shows the number of pupils that were absent for the week in Antisinu's class. There are 30 pupils in the class. There are 30 pupils in the class. Let's see. On Monday, now this is what I mean by key. This face represents two pupils. Anytime you see this face, it means I'm talking about two pupils. Now let's see. On Monday, we have one face, so two pupils were absent here. Another two, two, two. So the four faces represent eight pupils. Are we together? Let me take you back to example number one. Instead of me to draw so much hen on Simi's farm, I would have written a key to note that anywhere you see a hen, it represents two or three hens together. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Now see how many hens I drew on the board. 28. It can be time consuming when we have to draw lots of pictures to represent a data. So instead of drawing so much hen, so much cow, so much pig, I can write key and tell you that a hen, anywhere you see a hen, it stands for four hens. Are we together? Yes, together we are. Yes, I hope you understand what key means now. So now, anytime you see this face, it represents two pupils. It represents two pupils. So for Monday, instead of drawing eight pupils that were absent on Monday, I decided to represent one face for two pupils. Are we together? Yes, together we are. So on Monday, we have two, 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 two. So we have two, 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 two. So two plus two plus two plus two it gives us eight. So on Monday, we have eight pupils absent or eight absent pupils. On Tuesday, we have two, 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 two plus two plus two gives us six. So we have six pupils were absent on Tuesday. 
on Wednesday, we have two, 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 two. So we have 10 pupils. 10 pupils were absent on Wednesday. On Thursday, we have two, two, two. That means six pupils were absent on Thursday. Now, Friday, can you do it on your own? Yes, only two pupils were absent on Friday. Good job, you. Let's use the information above to answer the following questions. One, how many pupils were absent on Monday? Yes, let's count again. Two, four, six, eight. So, how many pupils were absent on Monday? We have eight pupils. Yes, how many pupils were absent on Tuesday? Let's go back and see. Two, four, six. So we have. So we have six pupils. Six pupils were absent on Tuesday. Which day were pupils least absent? Which day were pupils least absent? That means which day did pupils come to school very well? that a lot of people did not, did not, were not absent from school. So which day did most pupils come to school? Only a few did not come to school. Let's see. Yes, on Monday, eight pupils were absent from school. On Tuesday, six pupils were absent from school. On Wednesday, 10 pupils were absent from school. On Thursday, six pupils were absent from school. But on Friday, only two pupils were absent. So which day has the least absent? That's which day where people so the pupils were so many in the class and almost nobody was absent. It's Friday because it's only two pupils that were absent on Friday. So let's go back to the question and see. Yes, Friday. On Friday. Which day were pupils least absent is on Friday. Almost all the whole class came to school on Friday. Only two pupils were absent. So Friday. Same number of pupils were absent on same number of pupils were absent on Tuesday and Thursday. On Tuesday we have six and on Thursday we have six. So same numbers of pupils were absent on Tuesday and Thursday. Good job, you. Yes. Number five. The day pupils were most absent. Which day were people were pupils most absent? And that's on Wednesday because ten pupils were absent on Wednesday. Yes, ten pupils were absent on. Wednesday. How many pupils were absent all together? All together. From Monday, we had eight pupils absent. Tuesday, we had six pupils absent. That is 14. Wednesday, 10 pupils were absent. That is 24. On Thursday, six pupils were absent. That is 30. And on Friday, two pupils were absent. So we have 32. So that week in Antitinus class, 32 pupils were absent throughout the whole week. Throughout the whole week. Now do this. Yes, I want to find out how well you have been following the pictogram lesson. How well did you understand today's lesson? Show me. It's evaluation time and it's classwork time. Yes. This pictogram shows the number of oranges produced by three states, Lagos, Ogun, and Oshun. Key, one orange, one picture of an orange stands for two oranges. One picture of an orange signifies two oranges. One picture of an orange represents two oranges. So tell me, how many oranges is Lagos producing? How many oranges is Ogun producing? How many oranges is Oshun producing? Yes, you have two minutes to do that and your time starts now.
pens down pens down stop writing it's time up eyes on me eyes on me eyes on auntie tino let's get the correction to our to our evaluation question use the table to answer the following question remember i told you key one orange represents two oranges one orange represents two oranges so let's count two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty two twenty four it means lagos produces twenty four oranges i know i know and i believe we are familiar with our counting in twos i know we are familiar with our counting in twos what i just did with the lagos oranges is to count in twos remember one orange represents two oranges that is why i counted the oranges represented in twos let's count oranges in twos two four six eight ten 12 Ogun produces 12 oranges 2 4 6 8 and we have only 8 oranges produced in Oshun so let's go back to the question how many oranges were produced by Lagos 24 how many oranges were produced in Ogun 12 how many oranges were produced in Oshun? Eight oranges. How many oranges were produced in Oshun? Eight oranges. Did you get all the sums correctly? Yes, you deserve a cheer. And I'm going to give you the love clap to celebrate your victory in today's evaluation question. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To you. I will also celebrate you with the best chair. You are B-E-S-T. I've put you to test. Yes. You are the best. And I love you because you are awesome and amazing yes it's assignment time it's assignment time and remember you must do antitino's homework use the pictogram to answer the following questions yes these are the pictures or these are the information these are the images you will need to answer the questions so capture them down in 20 seconds afterwards i will display the questions for you your time starts now Yes, I hope you have captured the, the images to answer your questions. Good job, you. And that's it for today. We have come to the end of another awesome mathematics class. But don't go away because Uncle Shea is coming for another awesome period with you in the general studies class. Till I come your way next lesson, it's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye. Hello pupils, you are welcome to another exciting segment of the program, The Classroom in Your Home. Today we will be looking at preventive measures and this is General Studies class. My name is Sheyi and I'm your teacher. But before we move into today's class, let's have correction to previous homework. In our last class, we were asked to mention 10 contents of a first aid box. And like, we, like you were told in that class, I said, iodine, you can find it in the first aid box, ventilated spirit, plaster, cotton wool, face mask, scissors, bandage, safety pins, hand gloves, and thermometer. All right? 
If you got all the answers correctly, you deserve a chair. <laughs> Beautiful. Preventive measures. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to define preventive measure. You should be able to list potential dangers or people children should be protected from. And lastly, you should be able to mention three safety tips against these dangers. All right? What are preventive measures? Preventive measures are steps taken in order to be safe from danger or threat. Preventive measures are those things that we do so that we will not find ourselves in danger. All right? And there are many situations that pose danger to children, especially in today's Nigeria. There are so many situations that can, be, can make things or make life dangerous for children. Okay? Children should be protected from some people who could harm or hurt them. All right? So children need to be protected. And who are these people that we should protect children from? Number one, kidnappers. Kidnappers. Kidnappers are those people that will pick up children or even an adult and demand for ransom that a certain amount of money should be paid before they release the children. All right? Two, we have rapists. Who are rapists? Rapists are those people that forcefully have sexual intercourse with a boy or a girl, all right? Rapists, ritualists. Children should also be protected from ritualists. And who are ritualists? Ritualists are those people who engage in occultic practices. For example, we have people that engage in money rituals that use human parts. So children should be protected from ritualists. Cultists, of course, I know you know the meaning of cultists. Cultists are those secret society that engages in different um, killings and fightings, even in the streets, all right? So children should be protected from cultists. Armed robbers. Children should also be protected from armed robbers. Who are armed robbers? Armed robbers are those people that take your belongings or your property or your money forcefully from you, okay? Scammers. Children should be protected from scammers. Who are scammers? Scammers are those people that will come to you as a friend. Well, actually, they want to steal from you. The only difference between them and armed robbers is that they don't carry arms. They don't carry dangerous weapons, all right? But they are also thieves, all right? So who are those people that children should be protected from? Kidnappers, rapists, ritualists, yes, cultists. Arm droppers and scammers. You deserve a chair. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, let's look at safety tips to protect children from dangers. What are those things that children need to do so that they can be protected from dangers? All right? Number one is that when you as a child, you are home alone, when your parents are not around, you should always keep the doors locked and do not open to strangers okay do not open doors to strangers especially when you hear a knock at the door ensure you can recognize the voice of the person and ask who the person is before opening the door if it is a voice that is not familiar to you you should not open the door all right another safety tips or safety tip for you as a child against danger or to save you from danger is to know your caregivers by face and by name, okay? Every worker in your school, you should know them by their face and by their name, okay? Good. Another safety tip for you as a child to keep you safe from danger is that you should not share any personal information without your parents consent especially to strangers when you are walking on the road and someone comes to you to ask you of your name or your address you should not give any information to such person and as a matter of fact when you get home 
you should tell your parents. And even in school, anyone that you are not familiar with that comes to ask you any question, please don't give them any information about yourself, okay? Good job tracking the screen. Another safety tip for you as a child to make you or to keep you safe is to memorize phone numbers of your parents. It is important, children. You should what? Memorize the phone numbers of your parents, okay? And as a matter of fact, you should also have a line at home that you can use to call your parents in time of emergency. Also, you should also know the emergency numbers of Lagos states or your own state of residence, okay? You should know, you should have the emergency numbers of your state of residence. And also, please, you should know your house address. You should be able to tell anyone, the police, the, the number of your house, the name of your street, and the city where you are living. You should also be able to tell anyone the name of your school, okay? in case of emergency. And these are Lagos State emergency numbers. 767-199-112. So these numbers, you can call them in time of emergency. If there is fire, if you don't know anybody, if, you, if kidnappers come around and you don't know them and they are questioning you, you can quickly dial these numbers, okay? Number five, you should not go home alone. You should not work alone, especially when you close from school. You should go home with your friends or with, you should go home with your friends or with your parents or your brothers, your sisters, okay? So don't walk home alone. Another safety tip for you as a child to save you from danger is that you should not pick anything that does not belong to you on the road. When you see anything on the road or on the floor, please leave it and just walk away. Don't pick it. Don't pick money on the road. Don't pick any property or any belongings that does not belong to you. Okay? Good job tracking the board. Now it's time to ask you questions to really know if you have been following the class. Now you can bring out your pen and your book and let's write. Let's have these questions. Question number one. What are preventive measures? What are preventive measures? So you should define preventive measures for us. Number two, list potential dangers or people children should be protected from. Who are those people or what are those dangers that you should be protected from? And number three, mention three safety tips. Three safety tips, okay? I'll be giving you 50 seconds to answer these questions and your time starts now. Welcome back. Children, your time is up. You can drop your pen now. Please drop your pen. Good job dropping your pen. Now let's have answers to the questions. Number one, what are preventive measures? Preventive measures are steps taken in order to be safe from danger or threats. If you got that correctly, give a tick. Okay? Good job, you. 
Number two, list potential dangers or people children should be protected from. So who are those people that you as a child should be protected from? You should be protected from kidnappers, rapists, ritualists, cultists, armed robbers, and scammers. I know it is, it is very simple. And you got it correctly. Please give a tick. All right? And number three, mention three safety tips. Three safety tips. Number one of them is you should always keep the doors locked and do not open to strangers. Number two is that you should know your caregivers by face and by name. All right? And you should also avoid sharing personal information without parents' consent. All right? And I said earlier that you should not walk home alone. You should not walk home alone. And also, I told you that you should memorize your parents' phone number, and most especially, you should memorize the emergency numbers of your state of residence, okay? All right, if you got the number three question correctly, please give a tick. Now, did you get three over three, or did you get two over three? You deserve a chair. <laughs> Bravo, well done. If you got just one answer correctly or you did not get any of the answers correctly, I know next time you will do better, okay? Do not be depressed. Now you can pick your pen and your book and let's write down this assignment. Mention three Lagos State emergency numbers. Mention three Lagos State emergency numbers, okay? All right, good job, you. Now, did you know? 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 All right, let's have our question. Who is the first governor of Lagos State? The first governor of Lagos State. Hippie Brigadier. Mubolaji Olufunsho Johnson. He was the governor of Lagos State from January 1966 to May 1967. Actually, he was a military governor, meaning that he was not elected. They didn't vote for him. For, for him. He was not voted for, all right? But he was a military governor, okay? Now, who is the first civilian governor of Lagos State? Now, in this case now, we are asking that who is the first governor of Lagos that was actually voted for? He was elected. Who? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? And his name is Alaji Latif Jaconde. All right? Chief. He's also a chief. Or you call him Alaji Latif. Jack Conde, and he was the governor of Lagos State between 1979 to 1983. And before he became the governor, he was a journalist. So he was a journalist who became Lagos State governor. And during his time, he built many schools, many housing estates and roads. Kudos to him. So the first civilian governor of Lagos State is Alaji Latif Jaconde. And it is on this note that we will be calling it a day on this segment of the program, General Studies. I hope you had a good time. I had a fantastic time also. Until next time that I will be meeting with you again, Uncle Sheyi says, be good. Bye. This program is fully sponsored by the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEG and supported by the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board under the COVID-19 Blended Learning Intervention Initiative. Please encourage your wards to tune in and take every advantage of this laudable program. Also remember, this pandemic is not over. Let us continue to abide by all health and safety guidelines as stipulated by the government. At last, we are determined to leave no child behind. 
in our quest to improve the standard of basic education in our state. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. We have come to the end of another interesting, yeah. exciting, yes. and educative session. Yes. Yep. Did you enjoy today's episode like we all did? Before we go today, we will be celebrating some of our pupils who did their homework and submitted on time. Yeah. Remember, submitted on time. Uncle Sheyi. Yeah, first on the list is uh, Gabi Adiza from Vikmob Schools in Alimosho, LGA. Yeah. On my list, I have Chima Peace from St. Kizito Primary School yeah. in Etiosa. Okay, my turn? Yeah, your wow, turn. Wow, I have Ola Tunji Temiloluwa from Ayongure Primary School, Ikoroju, LGEA. Wow. And guess what? You've won for yourself a pack of Good Life Magic Jewels. And from all of us, we say, Good, good job, job you. you. Yes, you also want to be celebrated like them? Please send your homework, very important, your question and comment to the number showing on the screen, 081 five zero eight six five six six three remember sms and whatsapp messages only mm. do not call. call do you love your family and friends if you love your family and friends you must stay safe for them and for you especially to stay safe for everyone you love wash your hands regularly practice social distancing yes remember to eat lots of foods drink lots of water and rest well. From all of us, we say bye-bye. And at last, we, we leave, leave no child behind. behind.